one single incident that did change your mind about taking that risk and speaking out? It's not one single incident. No, it's two years that I served in the West Bank, that I, what I experienced and things that I've done. From bursting into houses in the middle of the night and seeing the families and how they react, till manning checkpoints, arrest operations and other things that I've done. It's a whole package. And when you reached that point, were you revolted by what you had witnessed? I mean, once you started to explore all those past incidences, did you start rethinking the whole package? Yeah, definitely yes. I think mainly for me was learning things about myself way before about the big politics. Um, I went through my service believing that I'm a good guy and that we are the good side. And suddenly I discovered what we've done and what I took part in. And that's why I felt that I need to do something. And how would you do it? I realized that I had to leave them to leave them, to leave them, to leave them. To leave them means that they would be in the eyes, and that they would be in the eyes, and that they would be in the eyes, and that they would be in the eyes. And in breaking the silence, we are over 950 combat soldiers who say, occupation, no. Yeah, that is wrong. This is not the path to go. Is it possible for an Israeli soldier to serve in the territories with a clear conscience? I don't believe that a soldier who served in the occupied territories has clean hands. It's not that I think that we are all, you know, it's not that we, every soldier murders innocent Palestinians, far away from that. But no Israeli soldier who served in the occupied territories, his hands were clean after that. Because at the heart of what you do, there is no way of seeing Palestinians as equal human beings to you. I'll just give you one example, which is, you know, nothing extreme, nothing exceptional, something very routine and banal. I served for 14 months in Hebron. Right now in Hebron, as we are sitting here and having this discussion, there are two military patrols that their job is to do what we call in the military to make our presence felt. What does it mean? The military logic says this. If Palestinians will get the feeling that the IDF is all the time everywhere, they'll be afraid to attack. So what do you do to give them this feeling? You make your presence felt. You start your night shift patrol. 10 o'clock till 6 o'clock in the morning, 8-hour shift. You walk in the streets of the old city of Hebron, break into a house, Palestinian house, of course, not a house we have intelligence about. I'm the sergeant, I lead the patrol, I choose a random house, wake up the family, men one side, women the other side, search the place, you can yourself imagine the dynamics, yeah? Climb to the roof, jump from one roof to another, come out through another house, wake the family, and basically that's how you pass your eight-hour shift, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, from September 2000 when the second Intifada started, till today, now. It didn't stop for one second. Yeah, the idea is that every Palestinian will feel the military is right here. You don't know when we're going to show up, what we're going to do, when it's going to end, how it's going to look like. It's to do what we call in the military, to create the feeling of being persecuted. Now, when this is your mission, again, this is not an action of a rogue soldier or officer. This is your mission. There is no way of doing it nice. <laughs> I realized that my job is actually to maintain an apartheid system. Very, uh, very early on, I understood that the rights that the Jewish settlers have are not the rights that the Palestinians have. I understood that I cannot touch a Jewish settler if he is attacking a Palestinian. The best I can do is call a local police department to come handle it. 
like I would do at home in Jerusalem. So these Jewish settlers that live in Hebron are living under the same rights that I live in, in Jerusalem, but a Palestinian next to them, next house over, next building over, sometimes next apartment over, lives under my rule, my military rule. And I can do whatever I want with him. I can take his home as a temporary base for a few hours to a few days to a few weeks. I can decide that I'm arresting the people of the house and tying them up to defense of my base. Um, if you will get an order to demolish their home or just lock their front door and don't let them out into the street, their house is on. A street that only Jewish settlers can walk on and Palestinians cannot. So they have to walk through windows to yards into the other side, into the castle of Hebron. I think realizing all of that in a very, very early stage in my service helped me understood that someone was lying to me along the way. I didn't feel like I'm protecting anyone. I didn't feel like I'm helping anyone feeling more safe. I feel like I'm terrorizing people. I feel like for the first time in my life, the boundaries between good and bad that I learned as a kid, and obviously I learned that I'm on the good side, I was broken. I felt like I am the terrorist. And my job was literally to scare people so they cannot think about acting against the Israeli settlers or the Israeli military. That was actually our defined mission, to make sure that to instill fear in the hearts of Palestinians in Hebron. And that's exactly what we did. It's from personal experience? Sure, definitely. Um, just, just the other week, when uh, some border police soldiers were, were rough with some Christian tourists, uh, another uh, soldier of mine, a colleague, said she couldn't believe what they were doing. I mean, come on, they're people, not pa um, yeah, they're people, not Palestinians. And that, I think, um, resonates throughout much of uh, the soldiers in occupied territories. I personally serve in the, in the Jordan Valley, and um, we can see it every day, how soldiers talk about what they're doing, how they act, how they look at these people, not as other human beings, not as someone who's equal, but as someone who's less than them. And, when you, and to think that, oh no, we can just leave that racism there, we can leave that xenophobia, no, um, they'll only be racist, they'll only humiliate Palestinians, of course not. And what this motion is, is how it will affect Israel.